Prozan, Prozan, heroes. Gonna tell you about Prozan, Prozan, heroes. Gonna tell you about comic books, costumes, facts, boots, and other stuff. In this week's issue, Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen. And we start the JLA. Welcome in to Bros, Foes, and Heroes. I'm Zach, joined as always by. Uh, Just trying to throw my, you off. Yeah, yeah and you sorry. do. You do. No, it's fine. <laughs> I showed you an ad for sciatica relief. Yeah, and I was just like, what am I looking at? <laughs> Uh, anyway, we're bros, foes, and heroes. Uh, yeah. I'm Zach. That's Mike. Hello. Uh, we have, uh, I have another good story for us cool. to talk to. Cool. Excellent. Um, something that I enjoyed. Some of it, eh, but no. f- for the most part. Sure. Also not as dense as what we've been talking about with Frank Miller and stuff. Okay. Um, not a lot of political satire, so that's mm-hmm. really good. Mm-hmm. Also, you know who Jimmy Olsen is, don't yeah, you, Mike? Yeah, Absolutely. I think everybody does. Uh, there was a string of comics. I think they've bring they've brought it back recently. I don't know if it's still out or not. I'm not going to say one way or another and sound mm-hmm. like an idiot. Mm-hmm. But of uh, Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen was a running title for DC for a while, and it was all about like adventures that Jimmy Olsen would have. Like yeah. Superman would be yeah. around too, but sure. Jimmy was the main yeah. protagonist yeah. of it. it. It amazes me that there hasn't been like a Netflix show or something like Just Jimmy Olsen. Off- you know what I mean? Oh, that would be... Like, it seems like that would be a thing. Because you could do regular stuff with Jimmy Olsen, have yeah. his love life and all that stuff. But and then just every once in a while, Superman shows up and well, throws rocks at him or something. You you say that, but these these are kind of... They're Uh-oh. very weird. Oh. Jimmy Olsen okay. has a lot of strange adventures. He likes feet. Um, yeah. And I <laughs> thought about first of just, like, making, like, a whole, like, oh, here in this issue and in this issue. Mm-hmm. But I think instead... It's going to be more fun because each comic was just built of usually like three individual stories. Right. So it's just short, like oh, two-page okay. stories we can blow through. So the, like the Jimmy Olsen's are like anthologies, uh, basically? Yeah, each huh. book is like hmm. three different ones. Okay. And so the cover always talks about one of the stories in there, and then there's yeah, two other sure, ones in there. Sure. Um, the cover always talks about a thing that's not even in the comic Well, at all. sometimes yeah. that happens. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it happens a lot. Um, <laughs> it feels like a movie trailer where they, they they show you clips that are never in the movie. Oh, yeah. I can't stand that. That's, oh. that's bait and switch. It is, but it's better than them giving it all away the whole time. That's true. Tra- trailer sucks. So uh, the first story that I want to bring up from these is just little funny, humorous because because they're going to be fun. Okay, great uh, nuggets is from love uh, some fun nuggets from number thirty. Okay, of Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen. Holy crap! Featuring, it went to number thirty. <laughs> oh no no! It went to hundred and something. Oh wow! First, really? One hundred eighty something. Holy crud! Um, but uh, this one is called featuring the son of Superman. Each mm. each book would also have like a second title so he it. tries to kill Jimmy Olsen in this one. Well, is no, that it says <laughs> son of Superman. Well, all we see though on the cover. Uh, is Jimmy Olsen has given Superman a smoking jacket, oh, it looks oh, like, right? Okay, sure. And it says on the box here, to dad Superman from Jimmy. Right? To dad Superman. To dad Superman. And Superman has burnt a hole in the smoking jacket and mm. says, Jimmy, this gift you got me for Father's Day makes me sorry I ever adopted you as my son. <laughs> I'll have to destroy it to teach you a lesson. And Jimmy says, but Superman, oh. I mean, dad, what did I do wrong? So Why didn't he just call him Super Dad? He, he goes back and forth between it. It's better than Dad Man. It is. And I'll tell these, obviously, in, in more short short form than having to read through it all. <laughs> to Dad Superman. Ah, uh, yeah. I just have random ads to make yeah. it like, work yeah, out. Yeah, it's wonderful. Too. I love it. This so guy's very strong. Essentially, what happens is Jimmy Olsen, Cub mm-hmm. Reporter Jimmy Olsen, is what mm-hmm. they always Cub call Reporter him. Jimmy Olsen, um, he's, Superman's pal. He is at. It says him and the male workers at the Daily Planet are at some sort of like. Oh, it's a father son picnic. It says male workers. Yeah, it does say. Oh. Where is or is it, it, it M A I L or M A L E? M A L E. Oh. Um, well, I didn't know. I thought maybe oh, Jimmy. No, Olsen I'm was... sorry. It's creepier than that. Boy employees oh, of the Daily Planet. Oh, gross. Boy employees. Yeah. Okay, but it's a father son picnic you listen to weinstein we find out that we find out (laughs) that jimmy olsen can't participate because he's an orphan he doesn't have a dad yeah and superman says god how many times have you heard that story like like not only in comics but like sitcoms and all that stuff i'm an orphan i can't go to the dance you know and then i mean uh, i'll do it for you 
that specific well, storyline. Uh, well, that's get what been you're repeated a lot. Yeah. It's like a trope. But there's well, there's nothing new under the sun at this True. time. We just kind yeah. of polish things in Especially different for kids ways. With no dad. <laughs> So Superman tells him, hey, Jimmy, I'll be your dad. Yeah. And here, I, I just uh. love this part because he's like, yes, Jimmy, I applied for court papers, making me your legal guardian for a 30-day trial period. What? Uh, <laughs> There's a warranty? <laughs> of course, you can back out any time uh. if I'm not a good father. And Jimmy's like, come on, fat chance of that. You're come Superman. On. You're going to be great. I love you. So we, dad. we see them go through, and uh, they basically win all the events at the father-son picnic. Well, no shit. <laughs> and then after <laughs> it's done, Superman flies them to a house that he's bought for him and Jimmy. I'm pretty sure that Superman could keep an egg still on a, on a spoon. Oh yeah, no, pretty easily. Do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, but he he uh, he says we'll live together in this house I rented, Jimmy. <laughs> uh, oh boy, our own our own home where I'll spend evenings with my super dad. There you go. There it's it is, super dad. super dad. There's a sign in the front yard that says Superman and Son, though, and it's kind of funny. Wait, it's in the front yard? Yeah, it's in the. Okay, if you can see it down, it's really tiny print. It's How in the front weird. yard. It says Superman yeah, and Son. That's odd. Uh, Superman basically tells him, though, hey, Jimmy, there's there's a door that honestly says secret room on it with the placard. <laughs> that's probably where all those robots are. That's where the secret room is. <laughs> um, he forgets. Yeah. Superman's wonderful. Terrible memory, though. <laughs> but he tells Jimmy, like, while you're here, you must never go in there. Like in there. <laughs> <laughs> my God. He goes in that room are clues to the other I- to my other identity, such as the clothes I wear. It's locked, and and Jimmy tells him, "Hey, I understand, and I can tell you, like, yeah, I'm not gonna do anything yeah, like sure. that." Then I uh, promise, Super he shows up at the Daily Planet. And he's telling everybody, and Clark can't act surprised like uh, he doesn't yeah, know. Yeah. Uh, Superman decides to take him out to the Fortress of Solitude. Sure. Why uh, it? To show him all of his like treasures and stuff. Because in the Fortress of Solitude, no one yeah. can hear you scream. There's <laughs> there's an animal from some distant planet that eats only big diamonds, which Superman makes from <laughs> squeezing out a coal. <laughs> Hold on. What the fuck? What is going on here? Dude, I'm telling you, these, these are great. This is like shit that Velma and Daphne would laugh at. They're like... Uh, then there's a statue of a guy with a giant forehead, and he goes, During an adventure uh, in the far future, I picked up the statue of what humans will look like in the year 1 million AD. <laughs> Which really, we just look the same. We just have really oh, giant, have giant heads. Oh, yeah, look at that. And then he it's shows off some forehead. giant tools that he built the Fortress of Solitude oh, with. Okay. One thing that's kind of weird that I didn't bring up. Uh, Jimmy, he, have you seen my enormous crank? When they. <laughs> When they move into the house, Superman tells him that I already brought all of your things from your former place, including your collection of my trophies. Uh, what? So, so Jimmy, Jimmy Olsen, Olsen has, has a thing of trophies that he calls Superman souvenirs that like basically, you know, how, of hair. you know how when like <laughs> vial of people spit. go on vacation, like family members would, yeah. and sometimes they come back yeah. and they give you gifts. Sure. That's what Superman does with Jimmy Olsen, except when bunch, he fights bad guys. There are a lot of those like little spoons. Like there's the Lex Luthor spoon. There's the Brainiac yeah, spoon. But it's more like, hey, yeah. I just beat Lex Luthor's ass. Like here's a swatch <laughs> of his cloth. That here's a I bowling trophy. Off. Yeah. I mean, they're more like pieces of like. I just can't get over the secret room placard. That's just, that's the best. So, uh, secret room. everything's going great. <laughs> and, uh, Jimmy Olsen always looked like oh, a ventriloquist dummy Superman, to me. Superman, here's the thing Superman is humble, right? Uh, if sure anything, he is. Doesn't Superman brag. Superman then shows off Always of the Fortress of Solitude a mural that he painted of himself creating a solar system. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, and by the way, Jimmy, I don't know if you know this, but I am He's God. Like, so. He goes, even more out of this world is a super mural painted by Superman himself. And Superman says, last year, my super telescope showed a distance. <laughs> you know, everybody gives Batman a hard time, right? For having like all his bat things. Yeah. But he just said super telescope. I know. Uh, showed a <laughs> distant sun blowing up, destroying its family of planets. The mm. people escaped in spaceships but had no home to return to. <laughs> Speeding there, I gathered millions of meteors and fused yeah. them together, constructing mm. artificial planets for these homeless people. Oh, great. Finally, finding a burned-out star, I rekindled it into a blazing new sun with an atomic heart. 
And then he has a map where he says, after the people moved to the new worlds, they named various parts in my honor. So there's <laughs> there's Superman's sun. Uh huh. There's Superman's comet, Superman's uh-huh. planet, and these, Superman's asteroid. These people are not real creative with their naming. So then he finds this cool little ray gun that Jimmy, or then he shows uh, that shoots out bolts of lightning. Then he goes, "Hey Jimmy, go ahead and like uh, play around with this and see." By the way, if Superman can solve the the galaxy's homeless problems, yeah. why do we still have homeless people? Superman, because Superman's not real. Oh, damn it! But so Superman you got me. Like I that was know. that was pretty definite. That was, you took me right down. So Superman. Uh, let's jimmy just fire this gun that shoots lightning bolts and he's like hey i'm gonna go check something in this <laughs> other room he? i'll be back when he comes back he grabs the gun from jimmy and goes hands off that gun son don't you know better than to use my things without permission don't you hands off that gun i just handed yeah, you and jimmy's like that basically that's it yeah and superman's like don't contradict your father his punishment i forbid you to ever come here again what yeah to the house no, to the Fortress oh, of Solitude. Oh, Fortress of Solitude. So they get back at home. Get away from my giant it crank. Says, it says, back at home, Superman is even more stern. Jimmy, you're taking poor care of the trophies I gave you. <laughs> it's disgraceful. Shine them up. Hear me? So he makes Jimmy shine the trophies he has of himself. Then it says, the worst is yet to come. Jimmy, soon uh, when Superman's telescope, uh, telescopic vision spots an emergency, a job for Superman. But I'm not taking you along, Jimmy. Stay and do the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Jimmy. Hey, does this 30-day trial period, does it go both ways? That's the thing. So um, he's back at the Daily Planet, and he's like, uh, when my dad does super feats, he gives the scoops to Clark Kent instead of me, too. Mm. He's like, ah, why? He's in my own son. I can see that being a problem. And I don't know why I love this. He pushes a wrist. He has like a Superman telecommunicator, I guess, where okay. he, like, you know. Okay. And he We're goes. We're just inventing all well, kinds of new he crap buzzes here. buzzes it, and he goes, hi, Dad. Fly me home from work. I called you. <laughs> hi, Dad. I called you with my wristwatch Superman signal. Mm. Superman replies, take it off, Jimmy. I'm giving it to Lois Lane. You bother me too much with it. That one time. <laughs> I'm not flying your ass out. You son walk. of a bitch. Take that off. And then, so Jimmy's like, Superman, being Superman's son is really lonely, and he's mm. really mean to me. And then, all of a sudden, like, he's sitting in the living room, and the door to the secret room is open. Uh-oh. And Superman goes, Jimmy, come here. This door is open. You picked the lock and snooped in there for my secret identity. Confess. And Jimmy's like, no, I didn't. And then Superman's like, likely story. He doesn't believe him. That's not a story. That's just a refusal. Then nope, he's didn't. like, he's like, oh, you know what? Tomorrow's Father's Day. I know what I'll get him to like me. I'll get him that smoking jacket. To which he, when he gives him the smoking yeah, jacket, yeah. Superman says, the emblem is crooked and the colors don't match my costume closely enough. I won't wear anything that poorly made. He's a and then super begins, ass. And then begins to disintegrate it with. Wow. <laughs> oh, the explanation's great, Mike. So that night, he's like, I don't know why I did this. You know what? It's not too late. I can go and ask. It was a 30-day trial. It ends yeah, tomorrow. Sure. Like, or, you know, whatever. Wait, who says that? Jimmy? Jimmy does. Oh. He's like, I'm done with this. Jimmy's like, like yeah, I've yeah. enough of this. I'm so good. So they show up at the judge, and Jimmy says, I don't have to wait for the trial period to be over, Your Honor. I know that I would never be happy if Superman adopted me. And the judge <laughs> says, great Scott. How could any boy refuse to be Superman's son? Great Scott. What do you have to say, Superman? And Superman says, if Jimmy wants to call it quits, that goes double for me. And the judge is like, Jeez. judge laying down some law here. He goes, then I have no choice but to declare the trial adoption void as of June 16th. The there can adoption. be no second chance for you to clay case this Wow. Mess. So what as a- soon as they step out, Jimmy's like, all right, well, goodbye, Superman. I guess you'll never have to want or you'll never want to see me again. And Superman goes, wrong, Jimmy. Still wish you were my son. It was all I'll a expo- test, son. I'll explain why I, de- why I deliberately caused our breakup at the Fortress of Solitude. Mm. So they go back to the Fortress. Okay. And Superman shows him this electronic oracle machine. Okay? Oh, God. And uh, he, says, oracle. he says, while you used the lightning gun during our previous visit, I consulted my super calculator machine. It evaluates complex data and predicts calamities days or weeks in the future. It is never wrong. He goes, and my heart froze at the prophecy it gave forth from its from its speaking mechanism. 
The speaker, you mean, yeah. Superman? I'm going to try to. On June 17th, <laughs> Superman will destroy his own son. Oh, no. Could you make that out, or was it too I muffled? could hear it. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. They, on June 16th, Superman has got his own a big son. gun. No, will destroy his own son. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, great stars. That means Jimmy. I adopted him. But if, I won't be able to cause Jimmy death if I have no son by June 17th. I'll I won't be able to call him death if, if I don't kill so him. I like, can just kill him now. He's like, hey, if I make him before you know June 17th, if I make him back out of yeah, the adoption, sure. I'm not his dad anymore, and I can't kill him. Or you could have just told him. So he basically tells Jimmy that, and Jimmy says, wait, Superman's son, something just flashed in my mind, and he goes and he takes him to that picture of Superman's son s-u-n oh and he goes the word son and son sound exactly alike it's spelled both different ways alike when <laughs> are they at, yeah they are <laughs> i feel like i okay. should say that for an audio right. podcast s-o-n s-u-n it, yeah, yeah. got it sure uh sound exactly alike <laughs> when spoken aloud i think the electronic oracle meant you would destroy this superman's son do they not sound alike and when so, read yeah yeah i mean he says spoken aloud but yeah. So oh, okay. Superman realizes that the star did burn out and he yeah. had to go find a new star. Oh. And so he, had to go find a new he star. destroyed his old yeah. son, made a new one. Oh, yeah. Back on Earth after Superman moves Jimmy back to his former apartment. I feel terrible, Jimmy. My misunderstanding of the prophecy broke up our father and son relationship. The court won't renew it. And Jimmy says, Don't apologize, Superman. If you were always out nights doing super jobs, even if we lived together, we would see little of each other and they decide or and he goes but even if i'm not your son i'll still i'm still your boy pal Ugh. and superman says nothing will ever change that jimmy tonight on a very special episode of superman's but, pal jimmy so Olson. all of these stories not all of them but there's a lot of ridiculous ones i can so, tell you i have some saved into the future where mm-hmm. jimmy goes back into the past and essentially starts beatlemania Mm-hmm. There is one that I found where Jimmy is constantly like he accidentally smacked. Not like this is funny, mm-hmm. but through uh, Jimmy turns out to be a bit of a roughneck because he smack mm. he smacks his wife on accident. Oh no! Has a kangaroo accidentally punch her in the face? Things <laughs> like that happen. That, those are those are those are light years from each other. The two things you just said. It's pages apart. So, uh, I thought these little things could be peppered in and be pretty funny. I think this is embarrassingly embarrassingly stupid for whoever wrote this. I love it, though. The fact that Superman is this this godlike character who who (laughs) confused the word son and son. What an idiot. Yep. You're an idiot, Superman. Hey, our heroes are just like us, too, Mike. Oh, okay. They can't read? Mm-hmm. Electronic Oracle machines never. So, wrong. let's go from that Superman. <laughs> it's got the big boxes of Superman Superman's souvenirs. Actually, wow. we'll go from that Superman yeah. to a different Superman in a way, and the rest of the Justice League for our main story of the Tower of Babel, and we'll oh. get to that after this break. Hello. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that little break there. What we are mm-hmm. getting to now is our main event, if you will. Ding, we ding, had ding, the ding. Uh, opening fight on the card. We're our main event now. Mm-hmm. And our main event is a story that I actually enjoyed a lot. Okay. Um, cool. And so I think it's I a, love this new format where we where we warm up with a dumb Jimmy Olsen thing and then rock it into something right? good. So uh, it, it's, it's a little of both worlds. I love it. Yeah. So what we are going to look at today is the Justice League of America or JLA mm. run. This is a little newer than we usually yeah, look at. I, I can um, tell you, I, I, I've seen these JLO comics before, but I've never never even opened one. It's yeah. uh, Mark Wade's run, for okay. those familiar with this. And he's who wrote this story uh, along with more through the JLA. But Tower of Babel, it was, uh, I believe, I do like the July. JLA thing. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah. No, I love the covers of these two. Mm-hmm. It's actually, but you can kind of tell it's a newer kind of art style. Uh, is that Plastic Man on the front? Where right there? Yeah. No, that's Rajagul. Oh, Rajagul. Yeah. Um. So or Razagul or Razagul. 
everybody says it a different Wouldn't he way. Batman? Raj Al Ghul. Yeah, it is, he is the Batman villain. Okay. Yeah. He is the main villain in this. Okay. So uh, it, our writer for this, of course, Mark Wade, pencilers Howard Porter, Steve mm-hmm. Scott, inkers Drew Garasi, Mark Probst. Not that Mark Probst. Hmm. I don't know. And the colorist was John Welcome Calist. to Survivor. I just want to give is everybody credit. When is that who you're talking deserved. about? I think. Isn't that, that Mark, Mark Probst? Probst? Or is his name not Mark? Jeff Probst. Jeff Probst. Jeff. It's his brother, Mark. Yeah. All right. So Good uh, the Tower of Babel storyline takes place in JLA, JLA issues number 43 through 46 mm-hmm. that ran from July through October that year okay. of 2000. Yeah. So this is this is the new millennium. This is 2000. And what we have here is Raj Agul is the main villain. And even though he's a Batman villain, he is a big bad. You know how some of the villains and ways yeah. can kind of yeah, leak yeah, over yeah. to others? Sure. Uh, sure. Raj Agul works just because he has the, I th- well, what is it? The, like if you're looking in Marvel, it's Thanos or it's yeah. uh, uh, the new guy, uh, Kang or yeah. whatever. Kang, uh, he Kang, Krang, just Kang, has Krang. Kang. 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 Ken Krang. Ken Krang. Um, he has, I'm trying to find, there we go. Um, I do kind of dig this art style. Though. No, the it's big, it, bold black lines around everything. That's kind of cool. So, of course, Raj Agul, he's the uh, head of the League of Assassins and also mm. has plenty of, plenty of henchmen throughout this. But we're introduced to him. And essentially, there's this guy. It's one of the lackeys there that's kind of begging for his life. Okay. We find out that he was taking care of a tiger for a baby tiger and it was one of two in existence it was a male all okay. they had was a female and they were raising it to kind of bring the species back to life if you don't know about Raz al Ghul, an easy way he mm-hmm. is very thanos like in one instance of he is an extreme i don't know what you Couponer. call eco terrorist oh, really? in a way like i don't know what you want to his whole idea is that mankind i might be using the word terminology for it is mm-hmm. kind of you know, corrupting earth in a way. Oh, okay. And that, you well, know, that is if very we could, yeah, yeah. Thanos, wean yeah. down, wean down the population mm-hmm. to a controllable amount that he can control. And then he can let, you that's, know, nature kind of do its that's thing. That's the actual, that's the same story. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In a sense. Yeah. All right. Great. So Does he that's, snap? that's Does he the snap goal. A lot? No, he, he doesn't snap and he oh. doesn't have to hunt down rocks to make it happen. Okay. So <laughs> no, he just carries around a tiger cub. Yeah. But uh, he, so, all this uh, makes sense. but all well, all that happened was a mistake. The guy watching him fed him chocolate. Yeah. And Raj is like, yeah, but you know, you basically, this species is now completely extinct because of your stupidity. Wait, I'm you, not going to deal with that. You said chocolate? Chocolate. Wait, what, what happened? Okay. Sorry. They fed the tiger chocolate? The, okay. We're opening <laughs> to a scene of Raj. Okay. Raj. I don't know why I said Raj. Raz and a man kneeled down Please in front call of him, me Raj. telling him, "You know, chocolate, sir. I didn't think I would. I would hurt him. I swear, because he's asking like you fed him what hmm. is how it's at. Yeah. Well, we find out that whatever it was, it accidentally killed this baby tiger oh that he was going, going to use to help to repopulate this, the tigers. Yeah, sure. this species, but now yeah. the species is going to die out because of human stupidity. A chocolate bar, which what he's you know." Yeah. humans what he's always against sure so he's like you know i'm going to help you this art you know the same way you helped him and he has this thug kind of like take mm. him out feed him a bunch of chocolate um we then see his daughter talia okay. uh who has a relationship with batman later on i will really? tell you in this will be important to know for the i just like to look out there <laughs> this will be important to know for the new dc movies because i think okay. we're focusing on grant morrison's batman okay um and I could be off on that, but no, I think Robin right. there, Robin in those comics is Damian Wayne, right? Who is Bruce Wayne's son, right? Damian's mom he's the is one that Talia becomes, Al Ghul. He's the one that becomes Nightwing or Robin. No, 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 no. Damian is Black Robin Hawk. in during Grant. Oh, okay. Yeah. Who's Nightwing? Is Dick Bat Grayson guy? Okay. All right. Good enough. Jason Todd's Red Hood. Um, um, Tim Drake is Robin. Sometimes is he also Red Robin? Uh, anyway, so yeah. but. So Talia uh, is Roz's daughter, and she's helping him with this mission that he has planned. And they have all these plans that they're ready to kind of, like, set forth. And what we see is a Bruce Wayne who has gone to the cemetery. It looks to pay respect at his parents' graves to where he arrives there to find the graves completely empty. 
His parents' coffins and bodies are no longer there. Okay. We then see some of Raja Ghoul's thugs. It looks like Talia's there with him. Mm -hmm. And they're watching Martian Manhunter kind of fly through the sky. Mm -hmm. And they launch this projectile at him that he catches before hitting him. And he's like, this isn't just a regular, you know, kind of rocket. And all of a sudden, it explodes at the end in these little nanites, like little Mm -hmm. uh, attached to his skin. Little robots? Yeah. And they're like, we don't know what's going, but we see all these nanites around him in a panicked look on his face. I would have a panicked look on my face. We then cut to this giant forest fire that's going on. Uh And we see Wally West is Flash during these. It's not Barry Allen. It's Wally Wally West. West. Okay. So Wally West is Flash. What is, I don't understand who is Wally West. Wally West. Like, what's his deal? Was Flash after Barry Allen. So Barry Allen died in originally in crisis on infinite earth back in 1986 so the flash that took over after that was wally west oh okay so all right yeah um so it's wally and our so it's the flash and wonder woman and they're working to try to stop the spread of this wildfire Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and while they're going through to stop everything they notice this guy in the middle who it looks like he's the he's on fire himself Okay. So they don't know if maybe he is another metahuman. It looks who, like, like he's made out of yeah, fire. Or like almost, maybe yeah. he just got these powers yeah, sure. and he's running amok. Sure. So like we need to calm him down. What's it, going on? Can, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Can't the flash just go real fast and like the so, wind puts out the fire? Well, so what they're doing is that's essentially the point is he's trying to run around and I guess get to where Diana can uh, punch him like he's trying to he's gonna punch the fire well no she's gonna kind of oh, punch, punch the guy the... to like knock oh. him out stop what's going on so he's running around to put the fire out around him so. and wonder woman gets close enough for the punch and she stops and she goes it's john as in martian manhunter oh okay okay so martian manhunter is in the middle of this thing he was uh completely on fire and he was on fire and he's okay. asking for them to Okay. Help him then. Please right? kill me. So, yeah. well, yeah. So, Martian Manhunter's already been attacked. Then we see, we go to like this uh, UN of some sort. Where mm-hmm. is this? Yeah, the United Nations headquarters. And there's these two countries that seem to be on the edge of war, kind of going back and forth. And Aquaman and Plastic Man show up there okay. to, I guess, try to stop the squabble between the two and work things out. But as they land there, more of the League of Assassins show up, and they shoot this fro- this little, I don't know what to call it, a, a bullet of some sort mm-hmm. I don't that hits Plastic Man and freezes it's him. It freezes, yeah, it's like a it freezes plastic yeah, cold Man. bullet or whatever. Yeah. So, and then they shoot another missile at him. He was in the shape of a football a second ago, though, right? Yeah. Okay. Bouncing through. All right. And then he's back to that. Okay. But, so he's frozen. Aquaman sees... What is what happens to frozen plastic? Mike, it gets very brittle and breaks. Brittle, sure, yeah. So Aquaman realizes this and realizes that the goons are shooting another missile towards him to try to kill Plastic Man. What is this Aquaman here? Yes, this oh, is Aquaman. So he's more of a Jason Momoa type Aquaman, kind of, and but this, with blonde hair. Yes. Okay. Um, and so he goes and is able to kind of stop. He tells him to stop it from hitting Plastic Man. But he's hit with something else, and a vial kind of breaks around him, mm-hmm. and th- this fume kind of comes through. We see one of the henchmen able to jump through with a hammer and just crack the head of Plastic Man. Oh, man. And he just breaks into a bunch of little pieces here. Wow, that's not good. Then everybody's trying and realizes, oh, Aquaman's like, what's wrong with Aquaman? Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, he's out of water. Maybe he needs water, something like that. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. They go to bring him Did water. They throw a bunch of sand at him. No, they go to bring him water. He is petrified of it. Oh, he just knocks it away from him. Tells it to get away from him. Oh, which is good. Well, which isn't good though, because if he goes without it for a while, he sure. can kip, you sure. know just like a fish yeah. out of water. They no, take no. Martian Manhunter back to the. I'm trying to, what is the uh, Watchtower, which is kind of like their outer space headquarters. Mm, I love their pamphlets. So. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, John is Martian Manhunter. And so Superman has noticed that these nanites are basically making his skin kind of turn into magnesium. So whenever oxygen hits it, immediately Mm kind of flames up. Oh, okay. And fire is one of Martian Manhunter, or Martian Manhunter's main weakness. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, all right. So 
that kind of incapacitates him. Uh, Flash puts together Plastic Man, you know, kind of as quickly as he can, and they put him in like a state in like a tube to kind of keep him safe there. Okay. They can't figure out why Aquaman is just refusing water so much, and they're kind of able to, you know, try to sedate him, and they think we have to figure out what's going on everywhere else. Arthur doesn't like water, but he's still, you know, fine with everything else. He can look after Plastic Man and John. Did you say Arthur? Arthur, Arthur That's his Curry, name? yeah. Oh, Aquaman. I didn't know sorry. that either. I'm sorry. That Aquaman is. Uh, no, no, no. I'm. You're good. I just didn't. I just is, didn't is good enough to watch over those two while they leave to go yeah. kind of figure out what's happened. Okay. Batman, it seems, kind of knows, or he feels like he knows who's behind this. Yeah. And what's going on here? So okay. we see him attacking some of the League of Assassins on a helicopter. Mm-hmm. Superman is going is uh da, 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 it's where very, is this? Very inc- inconspicuous is. when you attack somebody yeah. in a helicopter. Superman's talking to Oracle, who is mm-hmm. Barbara Gordon, okay. used to be yeah. Batgirl. Yeah. Uh and they figure out they're trying to figure out like what is going on in the city there. Okay. Um we then see Batman again Ooh. trying to make his way to Batman uh, looks Yeah, cool he in takes this out thing. he takes out the helicopter pilot and sees a list that says uh cargo manifest gotham cargo two matching cartons picked on you know and our pickup and it's taken shows to where it's supposed to be dropped off okay. so he knows that all right Roz is the one who essentially looks so like the manifest in the, right? in the thing yeah. yeah got it so we then uh, i'm trying to see where we're at oh they put plastic man in that tube and they tell um <laughs> Aquaman to watch after him. We then see that Ra's al Ghul. We're going to leave this here. You watch him. Has ex- he has uh, basically like uh, their yeah. ex- headshots it's in like front of him. It's like little tiny headshots in black and white. And yeah, with red X's out. over yeah. him. And it looks like he's slowly taking out the Justice League one by one. Wow. So we know that these are Ra's attacks that yeah, are actually sure. working really sure. well. Right. But he has a second phase of his plan that he's about to snap into. We see as he's at this control helm. Superman goes back to Metropolis to try to use him being a news guy and working in a newspaper to see if there's any leads he can pick up, which I kind of liked as a, oh, that makes sense that Clark Kent would try to use the sources around him to gain information. Oh, yeah. Well, my my thing is always like, if he could figure this out, why hasn't somebody done this before? Yeah. You know, but okay. So uh, he's there and he's asking like what's going on because the office is kind of in pandemonium in a way. And he goes, this is what's going on. And he hands them the uh, paper. Oh, we see, sorry, we see Raja Ghul count down to zero and finally hit a button. Uh-oh. And then Superman's handed the daily. Buttons are never good yeah. in show stories. Superman's like handed the Daily Planet, and it's all written in gibberish. Like, oh. nobody can understand it. And he's like, Chief, is this a joke? And he's like, no. Like, you know, I can't understand it either. And everything that people are looking at, like, nobody can make sense of the words on their computer the signs it's mm. like everybody forgot how to read oh wow or if you think back to uh because superman looks outside and he goes it's all like a bunch of babble as in tower of babel from yeah yeah the bible the bible yep so nobody can understand each other uh there's pandemonium in the streets wonder woman and flash have gone to hunt down kyle rayner who is our green lantern mm. here he's the last piece there gotta see what's up with him I feel like i've heard that only name. to find Green Lantern is now blind. Oh. And that is where we will stop. That's not great in a superhero. No, it's not. That is now half the Justice League taken out by Raj al Ghul in one comic. Uh, We will pick up with the rest of the story next week because it gets really good. And let's let's explain what's going on, right? Uh, There's there's some severe weather in the area. So we're going to cut this short at one JLA. Um, both of our wives are are furious with us that we're here recording. <laughs> that is so true. we're going to cut this a little short, and hopefully we don't die. And then um, because there's been like tornadoes and stuff, and we we do happen to be in one of those areas yeah. where it can get funky. So um, uh, I guess this is farewell, but not goodbye. Yeah, we'll be back uh, back next time. Yeah, we will. Yeah. Plus, we gave you Jimmy Olsen. What do you want? Exactly. What do you want from us, people? Come exactly. on. Exactly. Please. Watch. Everybody's going to like like hit us up and go, I loved it because it was so short. Yeah. <laughs> you should make it shorter. You and should make like, it All right, shorter. That's what we'll do. Yeah. Well, but, I've never had a problem with yeah, that, but okay. As always, thank you for listening. And until next time, take care, everybody. Hey, golly con.
Frozen, Frozen Heroes. Gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen Heroes. Gonna tell you about. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast.